Welcome to Regis Pre-Algebra. This is Quiz 2 Review. The first one has to do with order of operations. And so it says 50 times the quantity 4 plus 2 all divided by 3. Recall that the divisor sign means that I need to simplify the whole numerator first and then the divisor unless I decide to take the step to cancel. At any case, I need to do what's within the parentheses first. So this would be 50 times 4 plus 2 is 6 over 3. Now, at this point, I could evaluate the entire numerator. I could either go this direction. 50 times 6 is 300 divided by 3. But don't leave it there. Go ahead and do your division. 300, 3 goes into 300 100 times, and that's your answer. Or I could, at this point, come over here, and because all I have are multipliers in the numerator and divisor, and um, I, in denominator, that means I do not have any addition or subtraction. I can go ahead and say 3 goes into 6 2 times, and 2 times 50 is 100. Either way. Okay, number 2 says write as uh, Roman numeral, or from change from Roman numerals. And so for this one, you want to learn to see your groupings. I'm looking for anything where there's one, uh, a symbol less than the next one. So that would, the 100 is less than the 500, the 10 is less than the 50, and the 1 is less than the 5. So I want to read it off this way. 1,000, 100 less than 500 is 400, 10 less than 50 is 40, and 1 less than 5 is 4. So that's the answer for number two. Write all the factors of 30. Most of you have got this down. I could think of 1 times 30. I could think of 2 times 15. 3 times 10. 4 does not go in evenly. 5 times 6. And once I get to the next number, and so I can read these down this way and up this way, my factors are 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, and 30. So go ahead and list them out there. Number four, greatest common factor. Well, for greatest common factor or least common denominator, what you want to do is break it into your primes. 30 is 2 times 15. 15 is 3 times 5. 42 is 2 times 21. 21 is 3 times 7. And for the greatest common factor, I'm looking for things they have in common. What's common? We see that in the word. Greatest common factor. So the greatest common factor is going to be 2 times 3 or 6. Recall what it means. It means that this is the largest number that divides evenly into both 30 and 42. Okay, number 5 says, is it prime? We have the number 85. Is it prime or composite? Now, the number um, 1 would be need there, okay? But all other numbers can be identified as either prime or composite. The question is, which one is it? Is it divisible by any, any other value other than 85 and 1? Is it divisible by anything? And hopefully you know that when something ends in a 5, it is always divisible, or a 0, it's always divisible by 5. So no, it's not prime, it is composite. Number 6, prime factors. Again, we've done this once. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. No, we haven't. This is prime factors. Okay. So we could do it this way. We could say it goes into 2, leaving me 36, goes into uh, 2, gives me 18, divides by 2, gives me 9, divides by 3, and divides by 3. Now, when you go to list the prime factors, do not just list 1, 2, and 1, 3. Some of you have gotten confused with that. Uh, the prime factors, then, are going to be all of them. So it's going to be 2 times 2 times 2. We have three of those times 3 times 3. Every prime I see over here. 
I could also write it with exponents to three of those and three, two of those. Either way, I would accept it that way or this way. Seven says write the greatest common factor of five and 25. Well, perhaps you can just see this by looking. If the smaller number goes evenly into the largest, then it is the greatest common factor. Greatest common factor. So if I had 7 and 21, my greatest common factor would be 7, just by first blush. Now, if you didn't want to do it that way and you wanted to break it into primes, the prime for that is only 5. We always leave off the 1. The prime for that is 5 times 5. What do they share in common? And you get the 5 either way is your answer. Okay. Number 8, write the least common multiple. Remember, for least common multiple or greatest common factor, we want to break it into primes. So we have 6 and 8. 6 is 2 times 3. 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. Now, for least common multiple, recall that we're going to have a multiple. That means it's going to be a number greater than either one of the numbers I see, unless it happens to be the larger one. Okay, so how many 2s do I have in any one? I have three 2s there. How many threes do I have in any one? I have one three there. And do I have any other primes? And the answer is no. So this would be uh, four times six or 24. What is, what am I asking? Or what is what does it represent? It means that six divides evenly into 24 and eight divides evenly into 24. And it is the smallest number, they both divide evenly into the least common multiple. So make sure those words make sense to you, and you that'll help you a lot with that. Okay, so number nine, reduce to lowest terms, 18 divided by 24. I could either break it up several times, uh, or I could just see, let's see, what is the largest number I think divides evenly into both of these, and I'm going to, excuse me, I'm going to try to get a better sing, uh, symbol there. Okay, I'm going to divide both the top and the bottom by 6. 18 divided by 6 leaves me with 3. 24 divided by 6 leaves me with 4, and that's lowest terms. If I had not come up with that, but perhaps I'd come up, okay, they're both divisible by 3. 3 into 18 gives me 6. 24 divided by 3 gives me Eight, but notice you always stop and check. Is that the lowest it can go? And the answer is no. They can both be divided by two, leaving me now with three fourths. Okay. Number ten. Finally, write the least common multiple of twelve and thirty. Again, break it into primes. I kind of like to just do it in my head. This will probably become easier as you, time goes on for you. So I'd like to illustrate it. Uh, 12 is 2 times what? 2 times 6. 6 is 2 times 3. And then I'm done. 30 is, um, I could say 2 or I could say 3. It's obvious to me it's 3 times 10. And 10 is 2 times 5. So I'm just kind of doing it mentally. What am I doing to get the least common multiple? In which one of these does do I have the greatest number of 2s? In which one of these do I have the greatest number of threes? Well, they each have one, so it doesn't matter which one I choose. And um, what other prime do I have? I have a five, and I only have one of them. So six times five. Hmm. I paused because I knew that answer wasn't correct. And the reason it's not correct is even though I said it verbally, what I failed to do was write down my extra two there. So there are two twos, and that's what I'm missing. And 4 times 15 is 60, and that makes a lot more sense. Since 12 did not go evenly into 30, it gave me reason to pause. Okay, study your techniques. Make sure you understand the vocabulary so you understand what's being asked. We'll have one more quiz before we have the chapter test on part one of chapter one.